Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world. This is a Cube Conversation. Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with the Cube, and welcome to this special Cube Conversation. I've been running a CEO series for the last several weeks, talking to leaders about how they're dealing with the COVID-19 crisis and really trying to understand how they've been navigating through and communicating to their, their employees and their customers. I'm really excited to have Melissa D. Donato here. She's the CEO of SUSE. Melissa, great to see you again. Great to see you. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. I mean, you and I met last September, and I, one of the reasons I've been looking forward to this interview, uh, I, look, I'm a fanboy, uh, self uh, you know, mentioned. I threw the kitchen sink at you last year and you batted everything out of the park. We were talking about digital transformation, digital business, and you were really one of my, my favorite guests of the year. So Thank you. Talk, about, talk about kitchen sink. I mean, this COVID-19 thing came out of nowhere. When did you see it coming and what was your first move as a leader? Well, so for us, you know, we had a really unique position, Dave, because we have a number of people sitting in China. So we've got more than 250 employees sitting in China. So for us, COVID-19 is not new. We've been dealing with this for quite a long time since December when first started becoming ill in China and realizing that there was an issue. As of the 7th of January, we had to move very quickly. When China went into lockdown, we had to find a way to get our employees to be able to work from home very quickly. And taking you know, a couple of hundred employees that are sitting in China and being able to empower them and to enable them to work from home very quickly, nearly overnight, was no short task. So we took all of that learning back in January and then we were able to respond as the countries fell ill and the government requirements went into place around the world since then. So for us, this is nothing new and we're really fortunate that we had the mechanisms in place to handle the pandemic, first in China and now as it came across Europe and then of course into the US. Yeah, so you had the canary in the coal mine, so to speak, well before kind you really had to start. Like that. Yeah, well before you had to start making decisions uh, about uh, SUSACON in Dublin, which was scheduled to be in March. So that was your other, you know, big decision point, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really difficult for us because obviously we had customers, we had partners, all wanted to come to Dublin. In fact, we were scheduled to be together there as well. And we had to give them enough time to be able to make alternate arrangements. But at the same time, you know, we had to wait to see what the government was going to do in Ireland, because obviously that has a very big impact on the structure and the cost, et cetera. But we made uh, an early decision as early as we could, and that was in the beginning part of March, um, to make the decision to unfortunately move it to a digital event, which was not an easy solution. The first time in our history, bringing a big annual conference that's physical and in person to a virtual event that's sitting digital, it, it wasn't an easy over the night kind of you know, process and decision to make. So it, it was a hard one, but we're really confident. And May 20th is the announcement and the start of our di uh, Suzicon digital event. So not too long away from where we are now. Melissa, how have you altered, uh, enhanced your communications to your employees, your team, uh, and, and ultimately your customers and, and partners? Have you, you know, increased the cadence? How, how have you altered? Yeah, so much so. So we do, I do a video with my team um, that I announce and push out every Monday. So every Monday, I give them a business update. I tell them what's happening in the industry, what's happening with SUSE, what's happening with our customers. Uh, that happens every week, once a week. Uh, that's for every employee, and it's a video call, something like this almost. Um, then what we do is weekly updates on what's, what the great things that are happening around SUSE. You know, we've got a lot of amazing employees here in the open source community, but also employees as well. We've had employees in Italy who created virtual classrooms for their employees. We had an employee in the US who dedicated 30% of his bonus to give back to his local school. He's bought lunches for all the people in his hospital locally. We've had our entire Nuremberg, Germany office give all of their lunch vouchers to the homeless in Germany. So we also like to publicize all the good work that all of our employees are doing to give back to their local communities and globally. So the cadence has definitely been increased. We just ran a survey, Dave, this last week that closed yesterday. We got very, very favorable results. And that was definitely geared toward communication. No more so than now do the employees and the customers need to be aware of what's going on. You probably feel the same thing and through me and probably loads of other interviews know that, I mean, you know, we're not a magician, we're not a scientist here that, that could predict necessarily the future. I think the scientists themselves don't even know what's going to happen. But we're doing our best to take outlook and to take, you know, a lot of concerted approach to educate our employees and our customers of what they can expect. Now, for us, I'm in the very fortunate position that before COVID-19, 38% of our employees work remotely. So working from home for us 
is quite easy. It's quite natural for uh, our community and our open source community as well as a whole. So for us to make that transition, we were uninterrupted in way of dealing with our customers. I've been communicating with, communicating with them as well through emails and phone calls and, and other means pretty much at least once a month, if not every other week or so to communicate what we're doing for them. But again, you know, you, you said it, being proactive and being communicative right now, it's never been more important. So you, uh, it sounds like, are maintaining productivity. A lot of organizations are, are actually seeing a productivity hit. Uh, but in, and they're having trouble getting work from home infrastructure up and you know spun up. People joke on Twitter that's the sort of new tissue paper. You can't. I don't know what it's like in London, but you can't get toilet paper <laughs> on the yeah. shelves here. Yeah. And so work from home infrastructure, laptops, you know, VDI, et cetera. But it sounds like you really haven't taken a, a productivity hit. It's sort of a natural progression for you. Yeah, I mean, you know, we you know, when we met last September, we talked about the importance of open source, and we've been in business for nearly thirty years. And we've always run our business in open source community. And that is a community that's obviously geographically dispersed all over the world. So people have been working from home, working in their community, being transparent and collaborative, regardless of where they sit. So from an innovation perspective, we've had no impact to our business. So being able to work from anywhere across any boundary has been uninterrupted. So that's been great. 99% of our workforce are now working remotely from home versus up from 38% pre-COVID. It doesn't change the fact that things like hardware and software and the means that they need to actually operate from home is difficult. So we've made the concerted effort, for example, to make sure our employees in Germany had the capability to bring home their desk chairs, to bring home their monitors, to bring home their machines, to set them up with the ability to be able to work from home. Building on the experience from China, we learned we needed to provision early. So what we did in the beginning part of February was to begin to procure software and hardware that enabled us to have a bench of technology that we could utilize in case we had this pandemic run wild to support our employees to work from home. So I'm very happy to say we were well prepared. In our survey, we, we asked the question, how prepared are you to be able to work from home? And it was extremely high. It was it, it best practice and way of benchmarking for any employee survey to be able to provide them the productivity tools necessary to be able to work from home. So we're, we're very, very proud of that. Well, I want to ask you about sort of the, the 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 recovery. Nobody knows. I mean, we've never seen this poor yeah. shutdown of the economy before. I saw Bill Gates this morning uh, on TV saying he thinks you know it's really through June that we're going to have to live with this. I know the president of the United States is saying we'd like to happen before that. Uh, but but assuming there is a comeback, let's say June, we start to bring back the economy in waves. What, how do you see open source in, 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 a, in a downturn, you know, some prolonged downturn months, you know, maybe as much as a year or even more, how do you see open source playing there? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked it. I think that as the pandemic continues in any crisis for that matter, open source adoption is going to accelerate. There's no doubt. There's a huge pressure we're all going to face, even those successful businesses like us here at Sousa, we're going to have to go under some crunch and consideration around costs. Open source adoption will accelerate digital transformation efforts and will definitely speed up organizations to respond to the crisis because they're able to utilize all of the technology innovation and standardization of Linux and other open source technologies from anywhere, whether it's on-premise, in the cloud, utilizing edge. They're going to look for innovations and constant uptick whilst gaining cost savings at the same time. There's no better place to achieve that besides being in an open source community. So we're a very fortunate I would have never predicted a pandemic. If I had, I'd be a multimillionaire having played the lotto by now. Nonetheless, um, I think that there's no place I'd rather be for sure. And I wouldn't want to run any other company besides an open source business right now because we're seeing an uptick rather than having a decline. You know, I want to ask you about culture because as a, as a, you've been in, in SUSE as the CEO of less than a year, inside of a year. And you really have always focused on culture. You, you know, CEOs, obviously you, you got to worry about growth, you got to worry about profitability, productivity and, and the like. But I, I want to actually pull up something that I found on, on LinkedIn. It was from one of your newer employees. He's just new to SUSE. He said, my first month here, amazing colleagues, high amount of trust, lots of collaboration, willing to help each other succeed, giving back to the less fortunate in the community, high amount of respect for diversity, Amazing values, leadership is open, honest, trend-setting, industry-defining, really smart and genuinely super caring. Wow. I mean, he said in yeah. short, best organization I've ever contributed my efforts to and been a part of. And that, I think, starts at the top. Your leadership, uh, 
whether it's diversity, openness, transparency, you really have set from day one a cultural foundation, which I think is you know, playing out well for you right now. But I wonder if you could talk about the culture that you're trying to drive, Sousa. Yeah, I mean, that, wow. I mean, I, I did read that that post, and I was, I, I mean, that's life changing. I think for leaders like myself, when you when you have employees that feel the sense of urgency around the the criticality that they play and the role they play in the company, uh, you, you can't ask for more than that, really, genuinely. And I think that when I came, I took it personal to make sure that we led the company leading with people first. We're probably one of the very few companies in the world uh, that have one trademark, and our trademark is our Sousa Chameleon. We don't have any other trademark marks or patents on any of our technology because it is open. So the only thing I have is the people. The only, you know, the, the, the link to the world and this business being successful is our people. And there inevitably lies the importance that is pertaining to their culture. And I think that, you know, this is because we're community based and open source, it's really important that we continually collaborate. That we're constantly giving back and giving insight and giving support to community. And that needs to transcend the community and be living every single day in our company. Um, you know, you, you mentioned something in that post, which is the philanthropic side of who I am. I believe very wholeheartedly in the responsibility we carry as CEOs, executives, as companies to give back to our community. When I started nearly a year ago, I instituted the month of giving, which happens to be May, in conjunction with one day off every year for every single employee to give back to their local communities or a charity of their choice. Now that's proven very well, particularly now, Folks are taking time off. They're donating their time at local hospitals. They're, they're creating that sense of community giving and care that again, bleeds itself into the, the fabric of what this culture is. On top of that, recently you may have read the press, I'm sure you have, about us giving any medical device supplier or any medical device, and not just manufacturer, but institution for research of COVID-19. We're giving them free software and support to run and develop technologies associated with solving this pandemic. And, and that is truly a gift. I feel incredibly privileged to be able to give back. As you, you know, again, well know, we supply all the operating systems to many of our really important medical devices like CAT scan machines and mammogram machines. In fact, probably most of the machines being used in the U US today to combat many diseases are running on a SUSE operating system. We want to offer that back again to the community. I, the, the employees went wild over the fact that we were able to give back on a big scale to solve a problem like this. So I think, you know, when it comes down to who we are and what our culture is, Dave, people are the most important thing to me. I did an interview recently and they said, you know, going from a CEO that's very focused on sales and like you said earlier, very focused on outcome and deliverables and forecasts and budgets and EBITDA, is that still the case? And I have to say confidently, no, that's not the thing that keeps me up at night now. What keeps me up at night now and how I wake up every morning is wondering about the health of my employees. We had a couple of employees, one that was quite ill in Italy. We were phoning him and calling and emailing him from his hospital bed. And, and that's what's really keeping me going and what's inspiring me to lead this incredible company is the people and the culture that they've built that I'm honoring and taking forward as part of the open source value system. Well, I think those metrics, those performance, business performance metrics, what I've learned is they're, they're actually a symptom of a great culture. And so I'm really excited and amazed at what you're, you're building there. And, and thank you. You know, in this day and age, you hear, you know, at least prior to COVID, you heard a lot of attacks on, on technology companies and big tech, on billionaires. And it's really refreshing to see technology companies stepping up. You mentioned the example of medical device. There are many, many examples. And so thank you for that. Really appreciate it. Thank you too. All right, Melissa, great having you. I hope we can uh, talk again leading up to, uh, to SUSACON virtual slash digital. Thanks so much yeah. for coming on theCUBE. Great to see you again. It's been Stay great safe. to see you. Thank you very much for having me again as well and inviting me back. I look forward to seeing you next month. All right, ditto. And thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE and we'll see you next time.